My name is Eloise Cupido. In this lesson, I would like to show you what a Cartesian plane is and how we can use it. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use coordinates to describe the position of any point in the Cartesian plane. Plot a point from the given coordinates and describe a shape using coordinates. From Phil Weir is going to join me in this lesson, I've asked her to go to the Rand Airport and find an aeroplane there that has very special powers. This aeroplane will enable us to explore the Cartesian plane a little better. Let's see how she's getting on. Wow, this is like so cool. Hello, Rafilwe. I see you had no trouble finding the Rand Airport. Well, luckily for me, I had a map book to help me find this place. If you enjoy maps so much, I'm sure you will enjoy the mathematical map in this lesson. I've never heard of a mathematical map. Well, there is, and it is called a Cartesian plane. A Cartesian plane? Yes, the Cartesian plane is named after the French philosopher Descartes, who we think invented it. What was so special about him? I mean, what was he trying to do with this Cartesian plane of his? Well, he tried to take algebra and geometry and put them together. That hadn't been done before. Hey, I have an idea. Would you like to go see a Cartesian plane? Wow, that sounds great. What do I need to do? Well, if you go sit in that aeroplane, then you will see. Cool. Right, are you ready? Now put your feet up on the chair and close your eyes. Open your eyes. You are standing on the Cartesian wow. plane. It's huge and flat. It goes on forever. How do you find your way around here? You could really get lost. Let me show you what mathematicians use to guide you around the Cartesian plane. But what are those? They look like number lines crossing each other. You are absolutely right. There are two number lines which cut or intersect each other at an angle of 90 degrees. Really? But they don't look like 90 degrees to me. Maybe it would help if I showed you how the plane would look if we were to draw it in your book. Right, now here is the plane you are standing on. But where am I? These are your feet over here. We call this number line here the x-axis. Okay, so that's what this line is called. So what's that number line called? That is known as your y-axis, which is this line over here. Now let's have a look at the point where the number lines intersect. This point is known as the origin. I'm now going to show you how you can use these axes to find your way around there. Can you tell me where you are standing on the Cartesian plane right now? What do you mean? I mean, use the numbers on the axes to describe where you are now. Well, I'm in line with the 3 on the x-axis and in line with the 2 on the y-axis. But how would I write that down? Every point in the Cartesian plane has a pair of coordinates that tell us exactly where it is. But there are some rules about writing down a point. First, you need brackets. Mathematicians choose to write the x-coordinate first and then the y-coordinate. So your x-coordinate is 3 and your y-coordinate is 2 and then you write in your coordinates so the x is 3 and the y is 2 
you must remember to separate the X and Y coordinates by a semicolon. Okay, now I get it. So I'm standing on point three, two. Can I try another one? Go for it. How about this one? If I trace this point back to the x-axis, its x-coordinate is negative 1. And its y-coordinate is 3. So this is the point negative 1, 3. That was really good. Tell me something. Do you think you could find a point when I give you its coordinates? I can give it a go. What are the coordinates? Let's try an interesting one. Hmm. What about 4, 0? I can see that the x is 4. So I'll have to move along the x-axis until I'm in line with 4. And then move along the y-axis until I'm in line with 0. But it hits the origin. Is that OK? Sure. And we can see that the y-value at the origin is 0. Any point on the x-axis has a y-coordinate of zero. Try this now. Go and stand on zero, three. The y-value is three. And the x-value is zero. So I'm going to stand on the y-axis over here. That's because x is zero on the y-axis. So if a point has the x-coordinate of zero, then it lies on the y-axis. Good. Now I want to point out something else. Look at these three points. They have something in common. Do you know what it is? Let me see. They have different x values, but they all have the same y values. Yes. And do you see that they all fall on this straight line? Now here are three more points. They all have the same x values, but they have different y values. And if I joined them, they would also make a straight line. This is very useful when you work with geometry on the Cartesian plane. Now you'll see why we call this coordinate geometry. I can take any shape and put it on the plane. Each corner of the shape is called a vertex. We are going to label each vertex A, B, C, and D. We can tell someone exactly where this is by writing down the coordinates of each vertex. A is 2, 3. B is 2, 7. C is 6, 7, and D is 6, 3. I see what we've done. We've made a kind of map. Yes, we have mapped out each vertex of the square. And that was why I sent you to the Cartesian plane, wasn't it? I was going to show you a different kind of map. But I think it's time you came back now. It's getting a bit late. Okay, if I have to... Hold on tight. Well, I hope that Rafilwe and I have shown you how to use the Cartesian plane. To make sure that you understand what we did today, we have prepared a task covering the important skills. Write down the map of the coordinates of the polygon's vertices. Then use your map to make a copy of the polygon. Compare this with the original diagram to see if it is the same. Now it's time to say goodbye from Rafil Wei. Bye! And me, but we will be back next time we want to show you how to measure in the Cartesian plane.